I sort of want to dive into what Pinocchio is as a whole, but I also need to like express all the various iterations of Pinocchio. Uh, th- this is a very interesting kind of path that you can be taken down if you just look up, you know, Pinocchio like inspired films. We have the um, uh, Guillermo del Toro's version, which I haven't seen yet. Uh, this is not about that. This is actually about the version that came out earlier in the year with Tom Hanks um, playing Geppetto, the live action Disney version, not the Netflix version, which is interesting as well, simply because you would think Pinocchio is something that is owned by Disney. So how could Netflix get their hands on it, let alone uh, Guillermo del Toro get his hands on it as well. So it's kind of interesting to see that sort of be a thing. Almost like when the two Hercules movies came out in the same year, you had the Hercules with the rock and then this completely different Hercules all with both in the same year. So this is kind of the same scenario. And it's weird because we're talking about a piece of Disney property or a piece of what we thought was Disney property. So it's interesting, uh, to say the least. I haven't seen uh, the uh, the Guillermo del Toro's version yet, um, but I do want to at some point. Knowing that, let's also acknowledge the fact that we say this is a piece of Disney property because it dates back to 1940. The original, you know, f- full cartoon animated version uh, f- uh, from Disney. From Disney. This is a Disney movie. And that original version is, you know, very well-renowned as being one of the first that kind of pioneered Disney and put Disney on the map. You know, you have that, uh, Bambi, Cinderella, Snow White, you know, if you're thinking about the top five Disney movies that have come out within, like, a certain time frame that set the foundation for what Disney was going to be, Pinocchio is one of them. And if you don't think Pinocchio is one of them, then you're not thinking with your third eye. So now, looking back at that, and seeing what has happened from there to now. But since then, up to now, there has been at least one, two, three, four, five different iterations of Pinocchio outside of this live adaptation that we have. So the first one that I can find goes back to the year... 2000 no there's one before that actually in 1996 which is the adventures of pinocchio which is based on i'm guessing more along the lines of the actual novel i don't know a hundred percent if the original is based on the novel or not i don't know if like one's better than the other i'm gonna go ahead and say that they're probably of equal measure But this one is also not a Disney one. This one is done by New Line Cinema from the mid 90s. And it's it came out. It had starred um, uh, all the actors who were big at that time. You know, Jonathan Taylor Thomas as Pinocchio. It had Rob Schneider. It had Martin Landau. It. It was interesting, but it's definitely forgettable because I don't think a lot of people would even remember it as I'm saying the the word, The Adventures of Pinocchio. Now, after that, there's a sequel to that one that actually is sort of a direct-to-video version, still with all the... meant to follow that and still with all of the kind of 90s movie quality. I don't even remember this one existing, but it's called The New Adventures of Pinocchio, and that comes out in 1999, but that goes direct to video. This one, uh, The Adventures of Pinocchio from three years prior, I believe that went into theaters because I'm seeing box office numbers, and it didn't do well in the box office. Uh, it was it had a budget of like $25 million, which is crazy for 1994, uh, 96, I should say. And it only made $15 million, so it didn't do well. But apparently well enough that they made a sequel of it which is not done by New Line Cinema. This is also some random companies I've never heard of. Fry's Film Group, Creative Berlin Film Partners. Yeah, never heard of it. But it does see Martin Landau come back as Geppetto. And, oh, Udo Kier is in this too. You'll look up Udo Kier, U-D-O 
K-I-E-R. You'll know who that's from and you'll know like what you can correlate him to. It's hard to kind of explain, but I never knew that was, you know, that guy was in this film. So you have those two films. Now, a year later, <laughs> an exact year later, you have a film called Geppetto. And for those who aren't engaged in like the uh, whose line is it anyway fandom, Geppetto is a film starring Drew Carey as Geppetto. And it's sort of following more along the lines of the young Geppetto story as he's kind of making and discovering Pinocchio. So it's kind of like a reimagining, almost like how uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory focused on Willy Wonka, where the actual story is meant to focus on Charlie, which is why the story is called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So they did Pinocchio, but instead made it Geppetto and focused on Drew Carey. And it was supposed to be a film that was kind of like praising Drew Carey because Drew Carey was huge at the time. You know, he was doing Who's Line, which was super successful. He had his own show. Uh, he had all these different deals. He was a really big star back then. Uh, but yeah, this this was this, this was a flop if there if there ever really was one. Uh, he got nothing but completely destroyed on multiple episodes of Whose Lines It Anyway. That's the only reason I know it exists. But you know, when you try to look up Pinocchio movies, it does pop up, and I totally forgot about it because I haven't seen Whose Line in a great deal of years. And it's just funny to think that, yeah, this is just another iteration. And you would think that would have been the last one until now. You would be wrong, because four years later, in 2004, there is an animated movie that comes out called Pinocchio 3000. Now, I'm going to need you to stop everything you do. I'm going to need you to look that up right now. Pinocchio 3000. It is a full animated film, sort of in the realm of what we thought 3D animation would kind of look like. It kind of looks like that show, um, what was that show with the 3D animation that sort of looked like, it sort of looked like, um, Transformers Beast Wars reboot. It sort of looks like the animation for reboot. And it just looks really bad. <laughs> Pinocchio is just all these different kinds of colors, and it just doesn't make any sense. And I'm pretty certain, yeah, this is this also is not done by any production company I have ever heard of. I actually think this is a French film. Oh, yeah, it's it, it was released in Canada, France, and Spain. Languages is Spanish, French, and English. Its budget was $12 million and it barely broke, it barely made $1.5 that's pretty bad when you're using the name Pinocchio. Geppetto, an old inventor, creates Pinocchio a robot. So instead of him being a puppeteer, he makes, like, androids, and Pinocchio's an android who comes to life. Oh, God. This is a this is an interesting little gem to find when you try to look up the history of films when talking about something like this. So... What I really do want to do is I need to search up what the what the rights to the the, poke, the the Pinocchio name is and what that holds. Because now we don't get anything for another 15 years until... Actually, no, the math on that is wrong. 2004, 6, 7, 8. We don't, we don't get anything for over 15 years, something like 18 years. So this year we get two Pinocchio movies. One done by the Disney company called Pinocchio, which is a live-action adaptation remake of the original film based on the novel, starring Tom Hanks as Geppetto. Uh, it's also got Joseph Gordon-Lovett, Keegan-Michael Key, uh, Luke Evans. It, it, it's got a really good cast, and it's a really interesting turn of events with that with this story. But it's... <laughs> I guess maybe it was made to sort of appeal to this generation. So now I went through some time trying to just give this little dive on history because I thought it was interesting. But now to actually talk about Pinocchio, I mean, you can find it enjoyable and you could like praise the fact that they're redoing these these pieces of, you know, film uh, history while also acknowledging that they kind of missed the mark. And I say that with a very heavy heart because I do find parts of it enjoyable, but I also see a lot of the stuff that just they do not carry over and they've changed to sort of 
I don't know, make Pinocchio not seem like the character he actually is. Because the thing with Pinocchio is that he's just this naive, sentient being because he was a boy. Oh, he was a, he was just wood. And then he was given life. And he's naive because he doesn't understand humanity. He doesn't understand consciousness. He doesn't understand morality. But for some reason, they're still, they, they took that and they s- still made Pinocchio like this moral-seeking, listen to everything and always feel like you're doing the wrong thing just so you can do the good thing, little boy. Like, the, the, they still wanted him to, like, be good without having any of the moral consequences of how he's learning anything. He just morally understands what's right and what's wrong. And that's not what Pinocchio is. Essentially, Pinocchio is meant to actually be this complex character that doesn't understand the the workings of the world. He's listening to everybody and everyone's telling him to do certain things and he's naive and he falls for things. You know, the whole point of the, um, uh, the fox, I forget his name off the top of my head, but the fox that he runs into who tricks him into kind of being a, 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 like a like a really bad kid so he doesn't have to go to school and so they can be like rich. Like he's meant to fall for that. But then in this film, he doesn't. So they've detached what the real moral compass of Pinocchio is supposed to be and instead replaced it with this sort of meant-to-be lighthearted character arc where he understands what's right and wrong and doesn't really have anything to learn. Like, what is he learning if he really knows that what he's going to do is essentially wrong? The whole point is that he doesn't know, and that's why he gets caught up in, you know, dealing with the coachmen and going to the island of children and turning into donkeys. He's meant to not, like, be aware that what he's doing is not the right thing. But throughout this version, you're seeing it being portrayed as if it was, as if he understood what he was doing and knows it's wrong, but then still does it. And then doesn't find like the path of like learning anything about his life. He's just super positive and the naiveness is kind of drained out of him. There is no point where you kind of feel that he's learning anything because he already kind of fe- like portrays that he knows it, but still follows through with it. It's it, it's not true to Pinocchio. Although it is still enjoyable when you don't look at it with those kind of, you know, uh, really fine-tuned eyes to really expect something else out of it. It's made for this generation. And I think that's what people kind of forget that they can't take away from it. The reason Disney is doing this is for th- there's three reasons. One is so they can make money off old property. Two, because they don't have any better ideas, so they're like, why don't we just remake shit and make it look better, I guess. And three, they remake it for this generation. And that's not unthinkable. Comic books do that shit all the time. DC has done that at least three times in my generation because they want to make it where it's more up to date. Batman, written in, you know, 1940, 1950, when he was created, is completely different from the Batman we know now. Because he's been redone. You know, DC's New 52 redid Batman and made him make sense for kids now. Because you can't sell comic book bubblegum Batman from the 1950s to a 2020 kid. So they're making it for this generation because they think that that's what needs to be done. But then they're dumbing down the characters and they're not letting them live up to the full potential of what they actually were. And I don't know if it's because they're trying to push some agenda or if they're trying to express that, you know, they're, like the morality is that you should always know what the right thing is, regardless of whether or not you're told what is right and what is wrong. You should know what is right and what is wrong, which isn't the, the essence of Pinocchio. And I have usually have a lot of praise for the Disney remakes. You know, I love The Lion King. I love Beauty and the Beast. I find them enjoyable, and I still find my my childhood within those films. And I guess maybe I didn't find it in this. And I know I'm not the only one, because this is not well-reviewed anywhere. So, whether or not the few positive things I have to say about it, it's not going to overshadow at all the fact that this film is very, very much disliked by a huge portion 
of the fandom. A lot of Disney people hated it. A lot of diehard Pinocchio fans who that is their movie. You know, everybody has their movie. My movie is uh, uh, The Sword in the Stone. That's my movie. That or Robin Hood. Those two movies are my movies. If they ever wanted to redo Robin Hood and make a live action animated version of that, I'm fucking here for it. But this is some people's movies. And if you went into it being that you're a Pinocchio person, you're disappointed. So you're going to talk shit about it and you're going to make it known that they fucked up your movie. And you have every right to because they did. In essence, they fucked it up. Because they decided to take this moral high ground without really giving giving the character what it's really meant to be. And I understand that. But I can't say I didn't still, you know, find it enjoyable. But that's probably because it's not my movie. I'm not a Pinocchio person, so I took it for its face value. And I can say that even though I do enjoy it, I acknowledge that this is just not it. And this is probably one of the bigger disappointments that Disney has put out in a while, in my opinion, at least.